Hey folks, welcome to Module 6, uh, Student Progress and Feedback. I can't believe we are in Module 6. Uh, we have covered a whole lot in this series. We started way back in Module 1, where we did an overview of Moodle and got introduced to various pieces uh, and things that you would typically run into almost anywhere you're in Moodle, things like the crossbar and the kebab menu. We moved into Module 2, where we started to look at how do you build things, how do you create things in Moodle for students. And then we moved into Module 3 where we got into interactive things. How do you build things that students would actually go back and forth or there might be some level of interaction? Module 4 brought us to discussions and not just building the discussion in Moodle, but really considering what can a discussion look like? What can uh, student to student in interaction along with instructor interaction, how can we think about that differently uh, than the standard you post once and you reply twice to other students. We moved on to module five where we looked at assignments and we thought about what does it mean to create an assignment? What are ways you can instill choice in assignments? And then finally, how do you create it in Moodle? And finally, in this module, we are taking a look at the gradebook. So if you're paying attention, we have kind of done this full arc around how we really get in and get started with building courses in Moodle. So we hope we hope this has been really useful and we hope this final one, while it is a little bit shorter than others, it will pack a lot of information and it is technical uh, in some ways. And that is, un it is unfortunate, but it is also the nature of grade books. Uh, we sometimes think they're really easy, but when we get down to it, they can be pretty technical. So I just wanna foreground that as we move into this. So the first thing I want us to talk about is actually that structure of the grade book. And there's lots, you know, there's different ways of building out a grade book and lots of times it comes down to really two approaches, the points version and the percentages version. So the points version are typically all of the assignments in the course have some points value. Those points add up to a hundred or a thousand. It could be 200. It could be that one per instructor we've all had who added it up to 375 points. It really does vary, uh, but ultimately the idea is that there's some total amount of points and students gain points by completing assignments. The other version is percentages. Now I'm making a difference here between points and percentages. They're not a lot, they're not very different on when you look at it in one way. Uh, you know, if you look at it in certain ways, they're not that different. When you look at it in other ways, particularly as we look to program the gradebook or set up the gradebook, they are different in how we're conceptualizing them. So the percentages is more about how do we uh, attribute certain portions of the grade to certain, certain categories of assignments. So you might have, oh, you know, in my course's discussion is worth 25% and the final project is worth 30% and uh, student participation is worth 20%. You know, you might have these categories and you might give these categories percentages of that total grade. So this is what we mean, you know, do you do a point system where things just all add up or do you do percentages where there is some calculation when whenever you have an assignment that's within a particular category, that's going to be calculated according to the percentage and how it contributes to that final score. Like I said, on some level, these aren't actually that different, but in how we think about them, that will impact how we put them into the gradebook. The next thing I want to throw at you is thinking about participation. So many of us, I think rightfully so, have participation as a grade in the in our courses. And I've seen them anywhere from 10% to 50% of the grade. That's great. But the question is, how do students know their grade or how they're doing in that category? Uh, where does that show up? Because sometimes I see you know, participation is just one category or is just one grade in the grade book and it gets put in at the end of the semester. So there's a question about frequency and providing feedback and knowledge to students about how they're doing. Uh, and so there's a question of how often should you be providing that feedback? Uh, a good example I use in my own courses is when I'm teaching face to face and there's participation grade. Uh, I will have a item in the grade book for every week or every two weeks, depending on the frequency that the course meets. And students will get either, you know, a check, check minus or zero. Zero is they weren't there at all. Check minus is they, they participated, but they, you know, their, their contributions were superficial. And check is that they showed up and they made a meaningful contribution. And that could be a question that could be, uh, you know, a variety of different things. And in the guidelines around this, I give, uh, 
further examples of what which each of those look like. And so I give that feedback either weekly or biweekly, which means the students know on an ongoing basis how they're doing in that category. There's no surprise when they get to the end of the semester in what their grade is. You know, their grade aligns with what they have been seeing in that regular feedback. The final thing I want to say is that feedback, as you can tell with what I just described, doesn't have to be you know, directly numerical to the students. I used a check, check minus and zero. Uh, I can use lots of other types of scales for grades. And this is one of the things I like about Moodle is it does allow for some scale, for, for you to instill scales in a course uh, so that when you're giving feedback, it isn't just a numerical value, but it can be a lot of different things, including emojis. And we'll take a look at that uh, shortly, but you can provide different types of feedback even when you're dealing with this, uh, the grade book as a, a numerical place. All right, with all that said, we are now going to hop into Moodle and we're going to start to take a look at the grade book and understand it better. So once you're in your course, as always, when you want to go and take a look at the grade book, uh, you find it under your course title right under this tab here called Grades. When you first come here, typically the view is going to look something like this, what's called Grader Report. Now, Grader Report is just going to be a listing with your students in the left column and all the assignments that they have done in the, uh, in the right columns, and that will extend as far as as many assignments that you have. So as you can see, here are all the assignments. And the column to the left, that, or the, the third column, is their, what their total is. Now you're going to look at this and you're going to be like, what's going on here? One student has 796, the other has 100. Um, the gradebook isn't set up, and so I've created a bunch of assignments. I've gone in and graded some of them, or all of them, and now you know, it's, doing, it's doing what it's supposed to be, which is calculating, but it doesn't have the right formula to calculate. So... We're going to take a look at how to calculate that, but before we do, I just want to show some other ways you can view the gradebook that can be really helpful as you're starting to look and provide feedback. <clears throat> So the first actually is the grade history. Uh, this is a nice feature where you can either select a user or you can select specific items and actually get the grading history. And by doing so, you know, this is often useful if you're trying to remember, oh, did I upgrade, update that student's grade or did I do that? Um, or you need to change it for some reason and you forgot what it was before. So it's a nice little, you know, it's that second option on the, on the drop down menu under view uh, that you can go in and dig into the grade book on any changes that you've made. You can also, outcomes report you can skip, overview report is nice in that <clears throat> it brings you to this page where you can kind of see an overview of a particular student and whatever courses that you are in with that student you will see both, uh, you will see what the, how they are doing for a grade. So in this case I have this student in here in these two classes or I have them in all of these classes and this is how their grades are. Um, right now you won't be able to see other students, you won't be able to see the students grades in courses that you don't have them in but we might be looking at a little bit of a change for that for our lab instructors. That's something I don't think we'll have ready for the fall, but definitely be looking at to play with. But that's the overview report, looking at a, <clears throat> looking at a student and how they're doing across your courses. The next is the single view, and this is exactly what it sounds like if you want to look at a specific thing within a gradebook. It might be you want to look at a graded item, so any one of these assignments you can select, and what it will do is it will pull up that assignment and how all students have done on it. And so you can go in here and grade if you want, or if you just want to get a sense of, gosh, how do students do across, you know, do across the board without having to see, you know, without doing that scroll that we saw in the grader report. All right, we can also do this with users. So if I want to look at one particular user, I can pull that user up and see that <clears throat> I now have all of their assignments and how they've done on all of them, any of the uh, feedback that I've given. Really simple, easy way to just, you know, look at a single thing within the gradebook. The user report is similar to the single view. The difference really here is you are looking at really what the student sees. And it provides you, you know, it's a little more clear uh, for students. So if we look at this particular student, Notice it gives us, you know, the grade and what the percentage is, what that calculated weight towards the grade is, <clears throat> and then any feedback that we happen to have had 
uh, given the student. So this is really useful because this is what the student sees. And so if you're trying to understand what the student is seeing or figure, you know, you want to actually meet with the student, you can pull this up and you, you can kind of take a look through and have a good conversation about, you know, what's going on here or, you know, where, you know, I know she had trouble with this. It's just an opportunity for better discussion with all of the content, right, all of the grades and inf by feedback right there in front of you. So let's use a report. Uh, so now we can start to get into setting up the gradebook. Before, but before we set up the gradebook, I want to come down to scales. Because this is a cool thing that Moodle has, which is you can have assignments that aren't numerically graded. So you're not giving them a, you know, a 15 or 100 or whatever amount of points you want to decide. But you can give them textual feedback. And you can also, as I found out earlier today, you can actually do emojis, which, you know, call me a little bit of a goof, but I kind of like the idea that if we could give, you know, on low, low stakes assignments, you know, something like maybe it is participation, maybe it is just the, you know, a weekly check in or something like that, you can just very easily do emojis and have that have the students see that rather than, you know, using language or using numerical, you know, numbers that will like inevitably creates some value judgment about the student that just might not be useful in that moment. <clears throat> so to add a scale, it's really simple. You come to add a scale and you have to give it a name. So this one I'm going to call thumb, uh, thumbs and you probably won't have this option. This is to create a standard scale, which would be a scale. Uh, it would be a scale in which you uh, you and everybody else within Moodle can use. If you have a really good scale and you want to share it, let me know and I will actually adapt it and allow and create it so everybody else can have access. All right, so that's the title. The scale goes here and this is where it can sometimes be like confusing. What do I do? The little question mark gives us a sense of what to expect. So if we click on it, it explains what a scale is, provides a way of evaluating or grading performance in an activity. It's defined by an ordered list of values ranging from negative to positive, separated by commas for, and then it gives us this example of disappointing, not good enough, average, good, very good, excellent. I don't know about feedback, calling somebody's work disappointing or not good enough, this just feels a little too much from the deficit lens, but that's me. Still, this is a good example, and it's really important if you're going to build a scale, you do have to actually work from the negative to the positive. And the reason for that is while you are making a scale, and that scale will provide textual or emoji feedback to students, that scale is still going to calculate a numerical value. So if we do something like thumbs thumbs down, which I could do an emoji for, but I won't. So I'll do thumbs down, um, you know, one thumb up, two thumbs up, <clears throat> right? So this is my scale. Now, what Moodle is going to do is it's going to say, oh, there's three values in here. There's thumbs down, one thumbs up, two thumbs up. Moodle is going to calculate that as like, this is one third completed, this is two third completed or two third value, and this is all, you know, three thirds value or 100%. So just keep that in mind that this is still, there's on the background of Moodle, on the back end, this will still be calculated numerically uh, within their grade book. But for students feedback, what they'll get is thumbs up, one thumbs up or two thumbs up. You can provide a description if you want, that can sometimes be useful both for yourself and other people that are using the scale. And then you just hit save. And once you do, that scale shows up right here. If I wanna edit it, you know, maybe I missed, maybe I wanna do three thumbs, maybe I have an extra thumb. Uh, I can hit edit, or if I wanna, you know, I didn't like it, this isn't what I wanna use, I can delete it. All right, so now we've created a scale, excellent. And now what we need to do is actually set up the gradebook. So again, we come to the drop down menu and we're going to go over to gradebook setup. And once we're in here, we're going to notice a couple things going on here. First, there's a bunch of assignments and you'll see this throughout Moodle. All of the assignments that are created and connected within Moodle are actually linkable. So if you notice, if I hover my mouse over this, it's a link. If I click on it, it's going to bring me to this assignment. 
that's really useful because if you're in the book, yeah, sorry, if you're if you're in your grade book and you're playing around and you're like, oh wait, what was that assignment again? Or what was the expectations there? You can always quickly jump to it with just that click. Um, so you'll notice that you'll notice there's little icons next to each, and that's telling you what kind of assignment it is. So the little uh, word balloon is a discussion. The you know the, the little people with two arrows is the workshop tool. The little upload sign is the assignment tool. Useful things just to know. It can give you a quick that you know when you look at makes it easier to figure out what what things are. All right, so all of these are here, and then when we look at the course total. Notice that it's 100%, 100. So here is an example of a gradebook that is set up as points. The gradebook right now is saying, okay, all of these things are just simply added up and their total score will be out of this, out of 1000 points. So if you are creating a gradebook that is a point, that is based on points, that's really all you have to do is actually create, uh, create the assignments and then make sure that they are given the appropriate points and that those points add up to the point value that you're looking at. So if you were doing a thousand points and right, like if your goal in your grade book was 1000 points and you would, you were in here and you're like, wait, this is listing 950 points, then you know you'd be missing an assignment or something didn't get uh, the right amount of points. Great, but if you're gonna do a uh, percentage grade book, this is where it gets a little bit more technical and I just ask that you bear with me. I'm gonna tell you to do a few things and then as we do them, um, I will go back and help you understand what they are. So the first thing is, as a grade book as a whole, you wanna come up here to edit and you wanna go to edit settings. Once you're in here where it says aggregation, Right, aggregation basically is us telling Moodle how do you want to process the numbers here. And so you have natural, and then you have several other options. To find out what those mean, of course, you can click on the little question mark and it'll show you what those mean. So natural is the sum of all values, uh, sum of all grade values scaled by weight, okay? What we wanna actually choose is mean of grades. So we're, uh, <clears throat> we're gonna select mean of grades and in this area, which is the, the setup of the whole gradebook, that's all we're going to choose. We're just going to choose that and we're going to hit save. Now, if we notice, this is now 100 um, and there isn't that much else that's changed. Okay, perfect. We're on the right track. Now we actually want to add categories. Right, so when we talk about categories, I just want to give you a visual here. Here's one of our courses, and you know what you have is you have these different categories. Uh, so your your personal learning plans and one-on-one -on -one meetings, attendance and engagement, digit education portfolios. All of these you typically will have, you know, anywhere from one to three, four, five, six assignments that fit into each of these categories. Right, so this is what you want to think about: is what are the categories in your gradebook? When you have your categories and you want to add them, you want to come right here to add category. And in this case, I am going to just name them very simply as category one. And then I'm going to get to aggregation. For this, I am going to either choose simple weighted mean of grades or mean of grades. So what is the difference here? The difference with simple weighted mean of grades is that if I have a category and all of the items in that category are the exact weight, right? They're the exact same weight. So maybe it's a discussion, right? And in a course, I might have 15 discussions. Okay, each of those discussions are worth the same amount. So I'm going to do simple weighted. I'm not looking for any deviation from one, you know, from one discussion to the next. They're all gonna be worth the same. Mean of grades, if you leave it as is, often works like simple weighted mean of grades, but mean of grades is when you have a category and even within that category, you have assignments that are worth different values. So for instance, you might have say uh, a, pro a, a project and you might have three, uh, three assignments for that project. They're submitting a topic, they're submitting a rough draft, and they're submitting a final draft. 
Well, you might want those weighted differently. You know, you might want the topic to be 5 or 10%. You might want the rough draft to be 40%. And you might want the final draft to be 50%. So if you're doing something like that, where even within the category, things weigh differently, you want to use mean of grades. So I hope that, you know, that makes sense. We'll take a look at it again as we get into this. So I'm going to do simple weighted mean of grades. And then here, I actually want to change this to the percentage value of that total grade. So I'm going to say, yep, this should be 25. And that should, what you're thinking should be 25%. Category one is going to be 25%. That's all I'm going to do, and then I'm going to hit save. So I've created it, and now as we're looking around, where is it, where is it, it shows up at the bottom. Now it shows up at the bottom, but the problem is there's no actual assignments in there, so it's not calculating anything yet. If I want to move assignments that I've created into this, I can actually just click on the boxes next to the assignment, the assignments. So I might say, oh, these three are actually part of category one. So I've checked the boxes and I come here down here where it says move selected items to. And I click the drop down menu and select category one. It's going to prompt me saying, are you sure you want to, to leave? I'm going to say yes. And then as we scroll down to the bottom, we now see these assignments are part of category one. And we can see that because they're indented, right? They're now part of this group. So I'm actually going to pause and I am going to build out the other categories really quickly, just so uh, we're not wasting your watching time. All right, so I've gone in now and I have added all the categories and added the appropriate uh, weights to them. And so now they are all, this is all lined up. My gradebook is ready. Everything here adds up to 100. And they, all of these things will be averaged ultimately to make up this score broken down by these category, uh, these category weights. Excellent. Everything's looking great. I think I'm ready to go, but wait. I also have assignments that aren't in Moodle, but are still like still need to show up in the gradebook, right? So if you're teaching face to face, something like a presentation or class participation, you may also want to have in the gradebook. But right now, the gradebook is just filled with things, uh, things that I have created that are in Moodle that are things that students would go into Moodle to do. So the question is, how do I create something in the gradebook that I can grade, but may not be part of Moodle? Well, the answer is pretty simple. It's right up here under grade item. And so you would add this whenever you are ready to add uh, an assignment that would not be submitted or done in Moodle, but may happen elsewhere. So a good example I use this for is in one of my courses, I teach a, uh, I have my students do a blog and I don't, I have an external tool. I have them use blogger. And so when they go and they post on, you know, do their blog posts, I can't, there's no column here unless I actually, I create it myself. So we're going to add grade item and we're going to call this participation week one. Under grade type, I can do a value, right? So it defaults to value and it can be 100 points, but this is also where I can choose a scale. So I'm gonna choose a scale and now this menu becomes available. I'm going to use the smiley face scale because I want folks to see this and because I think it's kind of cool. Uh, and so now I have a scale, it's a smiley face. I have all the information here and then I have this, this place called parent category. And so what Moodle is asking me to do is where does this fit in? Does it fit into just the grade book as a whole, or does it fit into one of the categories, of uh, one of the assignments, or sorry, one of the categories which contains assignments? So I'm going to say, yes, it's going to be category one, which is my, you know, engagement or participation category. I'm going to hit that and I'm going to save changes. And now when I scroll down right at the bottom here, notice participation week one shows up. And notice over on the right what it shows up as. It shows me the emoticon. It doesn't show me any, it has this, this number three in parentheses. And what that's telling me is there's three, uh, there's three items on the scale. And in this case, the three items are a frown face, a, plain, a flat, you know, a, a no, uh, just a, a straight line for a mouth and then a smile. So great, I have it now set up. I can you know, use this as a grading system uh, or as a feedback system to students. 
But then, of course, the next question is going to be, well, actually, how do I grade this? You know, if I want to grade an assignment, like the amazing assignment, I click on it, and there's the grading button. I can get right into, you know, grading that. But I can't click on participate. So how do I get there? Funny you should ask. If we go up to the drop-down menu once more, and we go to single view, we can actually get it under select grade item. And we look for, oh, there's participate, week one. And now we have our students, and now we have the grade. So I can drop in here, maybe this student was, you know, maybe both students did amazing. They both get smiley faces. You know, I'm just giving them some encouragement. This is the end of their first week. I really want to, you know, uh, provide some, some really good early wins in the course. All of that's looking good. I can give some feedback if I want. You know, I really appreciated how you did X. I really thought Y was a great contribution, etc. Add all of that. I'm just going to shorten it right now to great job. And we are going to hit save. There. Now I've graded them. Now I got there by single view. I could also go to greater reporter. Greater report. I always call it greater reporter. Can't help it. I can always go here and I can scroll along the right until I find that activity. And here it is, participate week one. If I want to grade this column, all I have to do is click on that little pencil icon. I'll click on it and here it does. It brings me back to that, that single, uh, single view uh, place where I can add those grades. So all of that's great. You know, all of that's looking good. Everything's going along well. If I want to see how this looks to students, once again, I can go to user report and we will go to that first student. And here is our smiley face for that feedback. And here is that textual feedback that I wrote in. So that's the grade book, right? It's, it's a little bit, you know, there's a lot going on here. And you can get a little bit lost. Um, one thing you'll notice is that often, like you'll go into it, and it will leave you last where you it will have you where you last last left off. So in this case, you know, I went to grades, and it brought me to user reporter. Uh, I can very easily get to grader reporter, and here I am back on the that main uh, page. But there's lots of other, you know, just know that you can always come here to drop down and look at the different things. Uh, there's things I didn't cover in here, largely because you won't be necessarily using them or thinking about them. The big thing is the scales, if you want to create scales, that gradebook setup to figure out if you're doing points or if you're doing percentages, and then the different ways to look at the grades and be able to kind of hone in on either assignments or students. Uh, and also to be able to give feedback for assignments that are just in the grade book itself. So that's the grade book. You know, there's a lot here. I covered a lot. And if you're watching this and you're still watching this, then you're probably like, okay, I need to watch this again. And absolutely, it takes a little bit of time to get used to, uh, but it is a really useful tool. And the more you play around with it, the, the easier it becomes to understand its, its logic. So I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions and have a great day.